My name is uh, Brian Ashurst and uh, I'm in Southern California in the Imperial Valley. Run bees down here and I have a family that's also into the bee business. In 2018 we had 100 years as a family. They were primarily honey producers then. That's all they really did. And in the Imperial Valley, you could actually make a decent crop back then. It's really been since the mite, the farming practices have changed, got more monoculture, and the fallowing of water. You don't make the honey like you used to. But a funny thing happened. A farmer down here noticed that he was making more seed wherever the bees were. So he's the one who said, hey, why don't you put me some more bees out here? Let's see what happens. And my grandpa was pretty, he was a wheeler dealer and he figured out, hey, there's a service to be done here. And so he started pollination services. And that's how we got into the pollination side of it. We run 25,000, 26, and then you put the whole family together, there's like 50 something. So the Imperial Valley here in Southern California, it's a desert, gets very hot during the summer. You know, it's 115, 118 degree days. We have to shade all our bees to keep them from melting down. That and just for the help for themselves, they need to be able to work in this environment. We lose bees every year to an overheating issue. We're very conscious of the heat and what it does to the bees. The lowest they'll get in brood frames is a couple frames in December. And that's when they kind of take their, their winter break. That's the slowest they ever get. But no, we're never broodless. Feed is, happens all year long. We never stop feeding. We sub all through the winter. And then the varroa pressure is always there because we always have brood. So we have to be careful of that, stay on top of it. Do you know of anybody else in this similar climate that also uses indoor storage as a beekeeper? I don't know anybody who's doing it. I know some guys talked about it at one point, but nobody's doing it. We use it for a lot of things. We use it in the, this time of year, the, the fall, for the brood break. As the bees come back from Montana, the trucks go straight into the room so we can pull all the nets and everything off in the daylight. Almond time, everything comes into the warehouse, loaded on a trailer, put inside the call room. As soon as it's dark, truck's hooked up and gone. It's on the road. So we save, we save time on the road, we save time, you know, all that. Then the spring, all the packages, all that work is done in here. Later in the spring, they come back, they get supered. The pa those packages now, they're ready to be supered. Uh, we pulled honey in here because it's 115 outside. Bring them in here where it's a lot cooler. So we've done all that. And then back to the brood break again. So now we're pretty much, there's only a few breaks in the year where it's not running. Yeah. Yeah. So right now they're in there uh, to force them to shut down. We need them to kind of go into a winter mode. The idea being that the mite wants to lay the egg under the cap of the cell. But if there's no cell that's capped, then she can't lay her egg. So we're breaking that brood cycle to force the mite to kind of be in the same boat. and She can't propagate either. That way we treat right when they come out, hoping to get every phoretic mite on the outside thereby cleaning the hive. It's like a reset for the hive. Now the hive basically starts all back over. We have a steel structured building with uh, insulated panels, concrete floors, drainage. Uh, we gotta, gotta clean the room and keep it clean. Uh, all the water, the condensation is run outside. You don't want the floors getting all wet with condensations. All the doors are insulated. Uh, you know, it's not airtight. We don't worry too much about CO2. The air quality goes down. You're about at 17% uh, in there while you're in there. You can feel it in your lungs when you're in there, but bees don't seem to bother them one bit. So this is gonna be the north room. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah, you can feel it, uh, like the, the breath, you know? I mean, I can feel that there's less oxygen in the room. Yeah. yeah. No, it'll pull the oxygen out. If this was even full, it'd be, go inside there, it's even worse probably. It's like you're at an altitude. Yeah, yeah. We, we have uh, four rooms and we compartmentalize the rooms that way. If we don't need a room, we don't have to use it. If there's an incident where one of the units messes up, we can just open the doors and bring cold air in from an, another room. When we go to move them out, we can shut a door so we don't have to worry about heating up a room that doesn't need to be heated up. I mean, here you can see the fans and the, you can feel all that refrigeration, but these ones have their own. So yeah. each of these bays have... There's fans and stuff up there. They're up there in the top. Okay. Each room has its own system, independent of the other one. Yeah. And now I understand what you mean by, you can use the refrigeration from this room to help cool these rooms, but you can also shut it down 
to get the loads out. Yeah, because when you open a door, it pulls all that air out. Yeah. So we shut all that so they don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But I like them open just to, for everything to work together. There's uh, 700 in here now, 750. We could actually put more, but our biggest problem is it's hot. You put too many, the uh, tonnage can't keep up. Yeah, yeah. You know? But when we can really load it, oh yeah, you can put 1,000, 1,100. in here, and is this one the same size? Same size. Uh, we figure you can put 36 colonies per one horsepower. So in our rooms, you know, we have a 30 horsepower room, a, a 26. 22 and a 20 and uh, so we load them accordingly to whatever that room can handle uh, in August when it's 115 degrees later in the year you can put more bees because uh, you're not fighting the outdoors the reason you need so much horsepower is because you have to overcome the bees you have to the bees you have to defeat them in thinking hey it's I, I can, we can warm this place up but as soon as they realize okay forget it it's it's cold we're not gonna beat it we're gonna cluster now you can keep it down but if they think they can heat warm it up, they keep trying to warm it up. So you want more horsepower than, than is actually required to keep them cold. And then we monitor uh, the phone. All the rooms are connected to my phone. I can tell you the temperature right now. And so alarm goes off, you know, lets you know, hey, you got a room that's kind of heating up so you can react to it. So this is the north room, it's 40. The west, 43, 40, 43 and a half. And then uh, the middle right here is 41. Are there special considerations for like frosting up? Do you have issues with these things yeah. freezing up and defrost cycles and all that? Right, because in the summer they're working so much to keep it cool. We actually have timers on them to shut them down. They have to shut down so we can keep them to get the head pressure off. Uh, we keep an eye on uh, refrigeration units themselves just to make sure nothing's icing up. No, nothing's going wrong in that sense. Anything that happens, we react to it. We'll go in the room, clean the pans out if we have to. If the pan gets clogged, and it does, with, de with bees, water can't run off, the ice is up. I'm out here every day just taking a look. Been many a time full of bees in there. I'm in there cleaning a pan up on a ladder. Gotta do it. <laughs> we do a maintenance between every cycle of, of, of bees that go in the room. Uh, go drop all the pans, clean everything up, because you don't want anything to happen while they're in there. Power is a consideration for those of you considering it. Um, you gotta have enough power. It takes a lot of power to run these. Even the guys who built it had to learn some stuff on how, because this was a little bit unique for them. They build coolers for produce but never anything like this where they're having to fight the, the bees. And so we went into 400 amp service um, and that is more efficient and uh, saves us some money and uh, the units work way better. So from here on out, that's all I would do. You know, power bills are high, but the savings comes in on the uh, later on. One, your, your help isn't having to work bees for three weeks at least. That saves at least one feeding. That saves you some money. Plus, the cleanup happens, you're not feeding bees that are gonna die anyway. You offset the power bill with some savings on the work side of things. 